it brings us to our last sheet uh, of review. We have, uh, I think, eight true and false. Is that right? Is there eight questions there? Okay. So the true false tend to be the ones that people have the hardest time with, but we'll read through them and see if we can logically come to a conclusion, whether it is a true statement or a false statement. Question number one says the opposite of dividing by two is multiplying by negative two. The answer is false. And the opposite operation of dividing by two is multiplying by two, not the opposite number. It's not opposite numbers, it's opposite operations. The confusion is right here, when we do this, some people think we are using opposite numbers, but in fact, we're using opposite operations. Adding two and subtracting two, it's both two, adding and subtracting the number two. In multiplication and division, we got to divide by the same number, not a different number. So the answer is false. The opposite of divided by two is multiplying by two. Question two, true and false. <clears throat> In the equation, negative 14 is equal to negative two plus three X. The first thing you should do is apply a positive 14 to both sides. Padme, that is false. The first thing you should do is add two to both sides. Right. And that's the correct answer. In question three, in equations with more than one step, you should always eliminate the constant first by applying opposite operations. Jack, what say a few? If you have two step equations or more, should you always get rid of the constant first or the coefficient? Correct. So the answer, therefore, is true. True. Question four in the equation four minus x over two, or a better way to say that is four minus a half of x minus three. The second thing I would do is multiply both sides by negative two. Well, let's just check. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Subtract four from both sides. Agreed? What's left on the left? A negative half of x. And T.O., how are we going to write that negative half of x? We are going to write it with the negative sign in the denominator, right? So after the first step, that's what I get. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. So therefore, true, the second thing I am going to do is multiply both sides by negative 2. Question five, hello. This is a true statement. All three mean what? All three mean what? A negative half of x. A negative half of x. PayPal. Question six. The answer is true. In this one, they both mean half of x. If I drew it, it would look like this. I could also say this, or I could also say half of x. Question seven in the equation, negative two x equals negative 10, the value of x will be negative. There are two ways to solve it. Obviously, we could just isolate the variable and see if the answer is negative, which is this. And x will equal five, and then I could say flays or false. Another way to do it is just put a negative here. A negative times a negative does not equal a negative. So therefore, I could say because a negative times a negative does not equal a negative, I could say a negative multiplied by a negative does not equal a negative. That would also be proof that your answer is false. So either way, either pathway is proof that the answer is false. And finally, question eight, in the equation 2x minus 1 equals 12, the value of x will be less than 1. Uh, let's just go ahead and figure this out. We're going to solve it. So 2x minus 1 equals 12. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. 2x equals 13. Is my answer of x going to be less than 1? No, it's not. Divide both sides by 2, and x will equal 
six point five.